What's going on Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today we'll be taking a look at the brand new Void Exotic Rocket Launcher, the Deathbringer. This weapon can be acquired by completing the exotic quest Faculties of the Skull, which you can get from Eris Morn once you've completed the Shadowkeep main story and the Memories of Saimota quest. Full video guide to all of that down in the description box below. This brand new bangin' body of boom comes with an extremely high blast radius, countered by its lower than average velocity, and all the edge Nim plays could ever hope for. Its special ability is Dark Deliverance. This weapon fires remotely detonated projectiles that drop void orbs on enemies, hold to fire, release to detonate. Meaning that the projectiles themselves function in a similar fashion to the grenades fired from launchers like the Fighting Lion where you fire off a shot, hold the trigger until the projectile is over a target, then release to detonate, sending a hailstorm of void orbs careening down towards your foes. And the orbs themselves are in practice extremely similar to those released by the Warlock's Cataclysm Nova Bomb, tracking enemies upon release and bursting with a fairly large AoE. Now, a total of seven of these orbs spawn per rocket, leading to the potential of massive single target damage, or an extremely wide area of effect against multiple targets. It's actually a pretty good ability, especially when paired with the weapon's intrinsic trait, Dark Descent. The further a void orb falls, the more powerful its detonation becomes. Meaning that rather than shooting this weapon directly towards targets, you should fire it above them, detonating the rocket and sending those void orbs down, and the farther they fall, the more powerful they become. And believe me, the ramp up in damage is significant. When testing this rocket at basically everybody's favorite punching bag, Golmet, landing a direct hit with the Deathbringer and getting all of the orbs to connect resulted in somewhere around 35-36 thousand points of damage, which is kind of a fairly small number for an exotic heavy weapon. But when you actually aim above the target, about as high as this room will allow, suddenly each orb is dealing close to three times the amount of damage as it was before, resulting in a total of over 100,000 points of damage per shot, which is an incredible, incredible boost of power for this thing. Now, the actual distance that these orbs can travel is actually very impressive, and I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out exactly how high I could shoot while still getting the orbs to follow my intended target. And believe me, there are definitely limits to that. You won't just be able to fire straight headlong into the skybox and expect this rocket to go exactly where you need it to all the time. And generally, I found that at least keeping the target that you want to hit somewhere visible on the bottom of your screen was generally the best way to maximize damage and the accuracy of the void orbs themselves. This weapon will definitely take a bit of playing around with to get the hang of, but believe me, it's worth the investment. The rack up of damage you get from Dark Descent is nothing to sneeze at. To be honest, this has really got utility almost all over the game, allowing you to stack high amounts of damage on a single target or spread that damage out for incredible room clearing capabilities. In PvE, this functions as a great way to wipe a series of spawns from enemy dropships since the individual void orbs can track separate targets themselves. Though, of course, this does sometimes work against you. Because you can't control exactly where the void orbs are going, every now and again when you're intending to land full damage on say a boss, maybe a giant ogre or something, the orbs will flitter out elsewhere against enemies you may not have intended to hit. Which of course can be a little bit annoying, but believe me, it's nothing to cry over with this gun. The damage on this thing is great. And of course, for those large bosses, those large stationary bosses that are in open areas, the utility that you're going to get from Dark Descent is well worth the quirks the weapon has to offer. One of the biggest nerfs we saw coming into Shadowkeep was of course the change to Tractor Cannon. The way it worked before Shadowkeep came out is that it gave something like a 30-33% to 33 buff to all weapon damage, or rather all incoming damage for enemies that were debuffed by the Tractor Cannon, but it gave a 50% damage boost to Void Weapons. It's why you saw Spike Grenades being the number one way to kill anything in the game before Shadowkeep came out. Of course, with Shadowkeep, They've brought those numbers down just a bit. I think now, in PvE, it's just a flat 30% damage buff for all elements or no element at all. And I get the feeling that 50% damage buff, the reason, one of the big reasons they changed it wasn't just spike grenades, it was because of this weapon here. Could you imagine Tractor Cannon granting a 50% damage boost to a maximum height Dark Descent Deathbringer shot? It would have been wild. 
And after playing with this thing, I've really no doubt that this was probably a factor in that change. Now, moving on, these kinds of things go on for Gambit as well, as I found Deathbringer to be a great primeval buster due to its single target power and the fact that I can basically fire it and potentially deal massive damage to both envoys in a single blast. Anybody who's played Gambit knows that the primeval phase gets a little bit hectic, especially when your opposing team is playing a game of catch up and they're sending all kinds of blockers over. In these types of moments, Deathbringer will shine because you can just sit there, fire it right above the primeval, and usually all of the lesser taken will be surrounding that thing anyway, so you can deal massive AoE damage to everything in sight. It has definitely got utility in the Gambit game mode. Now, I also did get a chance to play quite a bit with this thing in PvP as well, though I didn't really get enough footage with it to put into this review. But for the most part, it performs about as well as you would expect a rocket to, though there are some serious quirks to this thing. The weapon's massive AoE and smaller tracking orbs make wiping multiple guardians who might be standing a little bit too close together really easy, especially since the orbs will follow your targets for a significant amount of time before dissipating. If you happen to be on a map like Twilight Gap and you know that there's like two or three enemy guardians camping it out around B, well, one well-timed Deathbringer shot over that area will basically bring the entire house down, whether they try to run from it or not. The potential splash damage on this thing is seriously just that good. Though, I would say that as far as PvP rockets go, Truth, of course, is still likely the better option as a Tier 1 Fire and Forget weapon that will cover just about all of your bases. And of course, in comp, Hammerhead is still the unquestioned champ of heavy weapons. But there's definitely utility for the Deathbringer in both Gambit and in PvP. Overall, I really like the Deathbringer. It's a fun and unique rocket that can provide a more than respectable amount of damage in PvE, with solid performance against bosses and large targets, and amazing splash damage for ad clearance. I saw someone refer to it earlier as like a wonkier Gyaller horn, and honestly, I would say they aren't that far off. It's kind of like a slower, less impactful Gyaller horn, except you function as the proximity detonation and the rockets are Nova bombs. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. It really is just a fun weapon, and it's well worth the exotic slot. Make sure you get out there and check it out. But alright, Guardians, there we go. Those are my thoughts on the Deathbringer Exotic Void Rocket Launcher. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. And of course, thank you all so much for watching. As always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.